This is, is, is the Business Playbook. Welcome to the Business Playbook with Mark Corcoran and Stephen Robb of Be Inspired. Mark and Stephen share their story of how they went from a flat in the Gorbals with a £300 each investment to grow in a global streetwear brand. Now they have a massive busy warehouse in Glasgow with 25 staff with players like Andy Robertson and Messi wearing their brand. Over the lifetime of this business, they've sold £70 million worth of products, and they're going to let us delve into their playbook today. We cover off loads in this story, like support for football players after football, and all the things that have gone wrong along the way. As always, please subscribe to the channel, and please drop us a comment and let us know what you think of this episode. So, thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, guys, I was just, I'm going to jump right in, because... Jamie and I are big believers that everyone is winging it. But you guys started Be Inspired with £300 each. You've grown it from a flat in the Gorbals to a global streetwear brand. You've got a massive, busy warehouse with 25 staff. You've been in and out of retailers like Foot Asylum, DVA and ASOS. You've got guys like uh, Firmino, Andy Robertson, Suarez and Lionel Messi wearing your brand. You've done... Eight and a half, you'll do eight and a half million pound in sales this year. And over the time that you've run Be Inspired, you've sold about a hundred, uh, sorry, you've sold about 75 million pounds worth of products over the last nine years. Are you guys, do you have your shit together? Uh, absolutely no chance. <laughs> Honestly, it's, I think, like you're saying there, the guys are just winging it. But still, like there's, we had a call today with Scottish Enterprise. Um, but look, looking at our US strategy, how how can we grow the brand? Things have gone a bit stagnant in the US. Like 2018, Be Inspired was probably at its peak where it's like COVID hits, Brexit hits. We're like, right, how do we expand internationally? The UK's been great, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. UK's mega consistent, but how big is the UK? It's 65 million people. How, when you narrow that down even further, you're talking like target audience, say 16, uh, 35, 40 year olds, Men, forty-one-year-olds, forty. Oh, I'm talking about the target <laughs> audience. <laughs> it's like how how big is that audience? And like, we still don't, we still feel like we've not scratched the surface internationally. So that was kind of the call we had with Scottish Enterprise today, and the questions they're asking, it's just like, I don't know, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> ten, I'm talking ten years in, and still don't know the answers. You say that when well, just touching on, you said the UK has been brilliant. When we were discussing like your growth in the UK, where you're at now, you're like can we really grow more in the UK when you narrow it down like that? How important has that market, like obviously it's the market that you're in, how important has that market been for the growth internationally? Does the UK drive the international business or has it been kind of... I think it's just the data that we get from the UK business. So basically, if we put something out there, social media or sales, because everything's on Shopify on the back end, so you know exactly what's working, what's not working. Yeah anything sort of starts popping off in the UK, then usually it, it translates into internationally. Mm -hmm. Although there is sort of someone... I think, I think the internet has made the world smaller now. Mm -hmm. so, social media especially. Social media, so that because the youth in the UK see what's happening in America now, like maybe when we were teenagers, it was all, you only see what was on TV. Mm -hmm. Like when I was, my son's 16, but he can knows everything about Asia, America, whatever, but... Like when when I was that age, I was like just had to rely on newspaper and the TV and the TV, them, and uh, like they've got access to like they're watching like Saudi football and all that yeah. now, and they've got their computer games. So they know well, like before, like say it was on the television, you just saw what people wanted to be styled like. Whereas like you're actually seeing what people are doing in different countries. And... Aye, you got a periscope into their day mm -hmm. rather yeah, than yeah. Just the yeah. TV programs or like yeah. you, you can literally go into what people are doing that day that time yeah instagram stories things like that so yeah. Yeah. that makes a huge difference so the fact it's definitely made the fashion world a little bit smaller that way yeah for sure we'll touch upon it but that's how you're you're big internationally <clears throat> because of your tiktok videos going all over the world yeah. eh? yep. Steven's yeah. the face of the tiktok secretly, and the... secretly love it I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> honestly I'm surprised you've not got the yeah. mic with him today yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was hoping he was going to bring the rail and yeah, get some clover. I was going to say it's but I don't even want that mic. So I'm like, yeah, he's, <laughs> he hides behind the camera. He'll not do it. Just tell him what to do. Yeah. So when we get into the story, we have to start with football. So I said it to you before, my football knowledge is fairly limited, but we're going to start there anyway. Cool. You guys met through football. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Well, so, like. 
we met through football in a sort of different way. Like I played for St Mirren and then I left St Mirren and I was really good pals with a boy called Andy Dorman. Robbo came in and took my place. Uh, <laughs> I'd, and, I'd moved from Dundee United to St Mirren right. and Mark had just literally just, just left. left. Literally just so, left but we, with a few boys that had kind of stayed on at the team when I joined that had been there with Mark, then it was kind of seamless, like seamless link when yeah, it? It was we just, just like part, we ended just being part of the same group. So it was right. like obviously you know each other through football, but we we just end up being this part of the same group really, even though we weren't at the same mm-hmm. team. So and said we used used to go for a coffee together when other guys would go to like the bookies or the yeah. pub. We used to always meet up for a coffee and yeah, we had like a little coffee club. There's probably about eight of us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> after. And really, it's like not the foot- coolest thing in the world. No, it's not. It's like, <laughs> oh, these footballers going partying and doing this and that. Nah, it wasn't it? We used to go and sit in Marks and Spencers and have a cake and coffee. <laughs> it's just like we we graduated to Costa because it was a little bit cool. Our- <laughs> <laughs> so, you then went from football. You were still playing. You got the opportunity to go and play in Thailand. Yep, that was lack of options, so I had to go somewhere. Right, so. okay. <laughs> lack <laughs> was, of ability. Yeah, <laughs> lack of ability. Where where can I show people that I've got DVDs of when I used to play well? I sent them these DVDs. Like, so I was in touch with. Uh, he was the assistant manager of a team in Bangkok. Right. So he was like, "Oh, can you send me any? You got any video YouTube clips or anything like that?" So I sent him some. I uh, made a YouTube and stuff, and, and then I peak. Yeah, <laughs> literally, I had two good games a season. I'm like, send them. <laughs> so. So basically, he came back to me. and says, "Oh, I, I liked your your videos and stuff like that. Can uh, here's what we could offer you as a contract, but there's no guarantee. You need to come over here, trial, make sure you're fit." And my mum was like, oh, "What are you doing? You're like Bangkok. <laughs> well, I think it's like sixteen hours flight." But my cousin uh, was living there. Her husband um, worked for the oil company in Bangkok, right. so she was literally based fifteen minutes from the stadium. So it made it a lot easier for yeah. mum and dad to realise like. Right, if it doesn't work out, at least he's got somebody there that can right. help him get on a flight back. I was twenty eight. <laughs> I was twenty eight at the time. I twenty eight. He thought, I remember him saying to me like, "Oh, when I first got there, I was at like, training. It was like roasting, like forty degrees, Ridiculous. sweating. Couldn't he run about? And now all, all the other boys are running about. And he said he went to the toilet, he's sitting there going. Oh, honestly, when, like, I was like, "What am I doing? I was literally in the toilet, like probably heat stroke, right. double double session. This." We white skinny white guy mixing with all like these Thai boys. They're just like couldn't speak any of the language. It was just for the first six months it was tough, but after that it was class. It was, you did it, it was, like it was tough for him, but you were doing the same with Ross County. That was tougher for me. I was about Ross County. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I it's a bit of a I couldn't understand the word they were saying either. <laughs> <laughs> and it was quite fucking freezing. I'd rather it was warm. Yeah. <laughs> You couldn't get any different ding wall of Bangkok. Oh, yeah, it's like so. Then you started. You like the buzz of the Thai markets. So you started watching yeah. the Thai so markets and seeing. You'd be, what you'd be get a, like a, a day or a day or a week to start with. Obviously, see that like coffee club thing. Um, we'd always been talking. We obviously, you know, like Scottish football. You know where you're going. You know you're not going up anymore. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So like we were honest enough to know that me and Robbo probably weren't even going to go up anymore. Mm-hmm. We we're maybe going to stay at that level for a few more years, but. What are we going to do next? We're always discussing that. So and it's a short career. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think to make people aware as well, people in Scotland, maybe Hearts and Hibs, people from Edinburgh, Hearts and Hibs play a little bit different from a level of like Dundee, St Mirren, Ross County, Partick. Like, we were talking the, about this just a minute. We were, like we were just the, about the wages that these guys get, and I'm, I'm not saying it's not a good living, but it's probably like a joiner or a electrician's wage. Yeah, that's what that's on. So there's a perception. Yeah. That there's a perception that football, that it's, it's, football. it's maybe even better than that. But do you know what I mean? It's only a ten year career, and it's not like you can yep. pile up loads of money. So when when I've stopped, I've got nothing. Mm-hmm. No worries. If you're ma- if you're married, you've got a kid, and your wife has to come with you to to move to Glasgow. Got to look to, after your kid. It's like that one wage is just kind of like yep. taken care of. You know what I mean? So. There's one of the questions that I had for you about about the support that footballers get throughout their career to kind of help them into their, their after life, after football life. Do you think the football players get enough support? I think I think people are expected them just to take care of themselves because I think the perception is that the ones at the lower level, like oh, they're in them, they're a footballer, they must have been, but it's just not like that. There's no support for them. So that's the, the level you use. You you at the same that. time, life like you don't get. You've got to look after yourself mm. as well. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I was always think when you're in that bubble, you think get one more year, <laughs> get one more year, yeah. get one more year. I'll do it next year, and then obviously I got an injury, a really bad injury, and that was me just done straight away. And 
I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? And then at that point, I'm like, well, the PFA aren't helping me enough, but why well, you have to help yourself a little bit? Mm-hmm. Well, you know I mean? But you are, you are constantly saying, what can we do? What can mm-hmm. we do? Yeah. And, that's, and that's what then... I, I was, was always interested in, like, say, eBay and stuff like that growing up. Yep. Like, if it was a, I think I would say, if there's a can of Coke there, if I could buy it for 50p, I'd try and sell it for a pound. No. I've always had that since I was, like, really young, so. It's usually fake bags, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bangkok's fake bags. Is that what I, I've, I've heard you on some more, uh, what would you say, professional outfits talking about how, oh, we, we, we bought and sold t-shirts, and I was like, that was definitely Schneid yeah. t-shirts. Like, yeah. Guckies. It was, <laughs> that, it was, <laughs> that, it was definitely <laughs> Schneid t-shirts. Uh, it definitely was. So what then started, when when did you then start branding the stuff up yourself and launch your own? Because that's that's basically what what happened. You went from selling stuff from mm-hmm. the Thai markets on eBay, sending them back to Mark. Yeah, I uh, just figured there was like a, this one. It was a like a multi story car park launch, and uh, above the car park were just levels of wholesalers that were making t shirts and selling them on the streets in Bangkok, just like rails and rails on the streets, and people and I was they going looking through them. Like, oh, that's quite a nice t shirt. I like up in shorts like. And then I realized, well, they're, make, they're selling them for this price. Surely yeah. I can manufacture them cheaper than that. So kind of went to the source, like where they were buying from. They were just like plain white graphic tees. Was they not making yeah. stuff for ID? Like, yeah, DC-10. Like DC the, like the, the, like... the factory, our very first factory, yeah. was making the t-shirts for DC-10 and Ibiza. The merchandise. Yeah, the, and they were sending thousands to them every year. So they were, they were, it was a, a decent enough standard, uh, a decent, decent quality. Standard. And he was probably at the, the early stage of his like manufacturing his career. Yep. And like he, an Italian, it was an Italian guy who was still keeping touch with just now. Right. Uh, it's funny though, because we talk about like factories and stuff and like making. I remember going over there and I was like expecting to see like a factory, but it wasn't. It was just like a shopping center that they made t-shirts in one little i don't know yeah it's just like it's not like a fat it's not like a factory you know it's just like wee cubicles and then they're like printing and sewing up t-shirts in the cubicle Mm, really Mm. ah it's weird man be like the uh, the old car boot sale at the omni center that's what it sounds like Mm, different floor different prices um so but you started making your own yeah so that it was actually the supplier's suggestion because he'd seen he'd he'd actually seen he'd actually seen the the quantities that was buying and shipping back to mark we were actually we were actually selling a lot like it was the ebay at that point we were selling like a lot of t-shirts for ebay Mm -hmm. and like just the amount of volume we're sending it was just he probably he probably saw it before we did is like where are you you going with that do you know what i mean you're selling like t-shirts i'm making on a stall here where where the amount you're selling, you could be doing something better. Out of Did it. someone not introduce you to even before that, like so to the source? There was somebody who said to you, um, were they wanting in on it or something at the very start? And they were like, This oh. was after, <laughs> this was after that was the right. time I got home. Um, actually, a lad from Edinburgh, actually. Um, I think he owns a poker online poker business, right? Um, and he came to me, Well, can I meet the two of you? And he's wanting to invest straight away, right at the beginning. And that's one thing we've never really had is yeah, really a lot of people approaching us to invest in, in the company. So it's still me and Mark, 50 yeah. 50. Let's be sitting there going, I wonder why? What are we doing wrong here? Uh, well, <laughs> a wee bit, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the thing I, th- I found really interesting the first four t shirts that you made, they were, there's a, an interesting story about the design of the first four t shirts. Um, obviously, when he came up with the idea of make your own brand, Rob was coming to me and said, I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Kind of that thing, like, what are people going to think of me, like, starting a brand? You can't do that. Because mm-hmm. probably what holds a lot of people back. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, so we end up going, right, let's go for it. We need to come up with some designs now. So we're, like, looking, up, looking about the places and looking on a thing called, like, Shutterstock and just looking at images. And then I was like, right, I had this idea of, like, we called it Be Inspired. Like, let's try and, like, skulls were in. Let's try and make, like, a skull out of, like, a sort of honeycomb sort of thing and then I'll put make these bees into a skull and I was doing it on my phone and I was like copy and pasting like these bees like oh, honestly it must have taken me like five hours just copying 100 bees and then I was, I was like pure proud of it like oh this is class look at it it's fucking brilliant how well have I done sent it to Robin he's like oh, it's decent by the way <laughs> So then he takes it to Matt, the supplier, and he's, and he's like, what do you think of this? And he's like, what the fuck am I going to do with that? <laughs> he said he's blown it up, and it's just a big blurry mess. It's just blurry. He put it on the on the screen, because I'd only seen it on my phone. He'd sent it over the phone. That was good. That I'm all well yeah. like, <laughs> you mock image. They can sell loads of them. We'll, so, so give them a Matt, the supplier. I said, Matt, what do you think? 
Well, it looks good. I'll put it on the computer. Put it on the computer. If you're so foxy, that's not I can do with that. <laughs> yeah, so then, so he done. To be fair, yeah. he does a solid and yeah, he made it less blurry. Yeah, he made it less blurry. It worked. But the first four T-shirts were all designed on your phone. Uh, not all of them. I think one was just an image, and then there was another one that we'd added stuff to it, and then that mm. one. That was the one that probably I put the most work in. Yeah. <laughs> which was the worst one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so like they were sort of designed on my phone or loosely. I think that was one of the. Like because it was, I was in Bangkok and he was back home. Then we were able to do a photo shoot in Bangkok. So straight away, yeah. it was automatically like in the sun. It just looked so something a bit different no. than like if somebody was starting a clothing brand here. Like it was filmed in the back streets of Glasgow or whatever. Yeah, so cool. it's like definitely like around the swimming pool and the mannequins with the. It was the football T-shirt that that popped off. That was the winning one yeah, to begin with. Really well. And the products were very different then. I was saying, I remember my first Be Inspired T-shirt had like red roses that faded to black, and I was like, mm. "We were going, you were going to bring them, bring them along." Yeah, we were like, that. Well, that, that was that wasn't necessarily about the designs or more our lack of ability at Photoshop. So it's like, <laughs> At first, we were just getting like vectors and images, and then we'd be like, "Right, we'll put that on there." And then it got to a stage of like, "What should we do?" Like, if in doubt, fade it out. And then we just basically faded stuff in. Honestly, it was a image. full a full collection. It would either fade into white or fade into black. I remember. So if we're getting adventurous. It would fade into it fade into navy. Yeah. We were starting Leafs, eventually. Leafs that faded. Yeah, and flowers I, that faded. Like, basically, everything had fade in it. So it was like world fade, leaf fades, roses fades. Mm. Uh, and that's, I think uh, I think over time like fashion changes and stuff but this kind of thing at the time was in see it was like the John yep. Shore era and <laughs> guys celebrity boys were wearing them like on the TV so it was easy to get these products they were delighted with it, like yeah. free product whereas now it's like completely yep. different we're we're talk you wear it. it on telly do you know what I mean now if, now everything probably why everything's going super plain because you can't get anything on telly unless you pay do you know, yep. you know like everything's like placement in, in sponsor with or whatever mm -hmm. so, yeah um, at this point, you've got the flat in the gorbo, so we can introduce to. And is this when you came back mm -hmm. to move in? This is when he was sleeping on the Sleep, floor. Slept on the floor. Did you not have to evict your uh, your current? His dog, your, your... his dog pissed on my folded in bed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't Seriously. keep the fucking class dog. I know. <laughs> no, but we, we actually that. made a dog. Uh, he had a wee pug, a wee Bailey, and we made like a pocket T-shirt, and we got a wee pugs smoking a cigar, smoking a cigar. <laughs> yeah, actually, it was class. <laughs> Need to re-release these. These designs were fun, mate. We weren't oh, fun anymore. No, yeah, we weren't bored of that. Yeah. Did you, uh, <laughs> did you not have a, have a flatmate, a really miserable flatmate that you had to chuck out? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was like, the tightest I guy in the world. Sleeping tablet. Yeah, he was the tightest guy in the world. <laughs> well, did he's did actually it? my mate, and I still pals with him. I don't know. But, um, but when, you, when when he moved out, did you know they not take the jam? And yeah, then, like, <laughs> took everything out of the fridge and everything. Like it was my jam and my cup, my. My tea. Why is everyone's checking yeah, their phone? Everyone's everyone's checking everyone. their phone. It's definitely my phone, isn't it? Oh, that's that's cool. Honestly, that's an alarm I've had on my phone to do something for six months and I've not done it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you then, so he's invested £300 a day. Uh, sorry, £300 yeah. each. And then that got us that got us a hundred t shirts. And yeah, enough. Robo sub me 300 as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so he's no lying either. Nah, we got it back. <laughs> 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 so you invested six hundred. You invested, nah, yeah, legally. So you own the whole company. Well, nah, too late. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a story that you had a a rule that once you done three hundred pound a day online, it was right. That's it. We're going for lunch. It so wasn't was... like a. It wasn't like a rule we'd sort of set. It just sort of happened. Yeah, because happened. we wanted to go for lunch one day, and we were like, right, if we get to three hundred pound. We're gonna go on a town and get lunch. I think you've got to have a wee bit of downtown as well. Like, because <laughs> we, but when we got back in the flat, we'd graft again to like ten, eleven o'clock at night. Thing, that's how I met my missus. Was I? Your missus then started working. No, he just middle. used to walk past office non-stop, yeah, back and forth until she took <laughs> note of him. That's all he used to do. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't work at the business at this point. Well, You're no, walking back and forth she past did. office. It was like the, the Greek that stayed with yeah. me. He uh, he worked in uh, an office, so we used to go in and see him on our way to a lunch after doing yeah. £300. Pound. Used to do a five pound meal deal, and uh, was it bread and butter? Bread and oh, butter. Oh, we used to go for lunch. It was yeah. uh, this was a five pound meal to, deal. Well, that's what we went. It was bread and butter, right. five, <laughs> five pound meal. And that's what. We went. No this spence, was probably no like beard. this was probably like six months after I'd been home. I'd say oh, yeah. I'd came back, moved in with Mark. 
We'd, we'd, you'd given up, well, we both given up our jobs. Yeah, we were working. Been six months. So we didn't just like start being inspired. Like, so we were both doing part time football. Well, I was playing, I came back and played for Brecon. Uh, he was at Strenrab. Both had injury problems. Um, we were both working on recruitment. I was working for a company called Sport Careers. Mm hmm. And Mark was working was, for Reed uh, and recruitment. Was coaching as well at that point. Yeah. I was coaching for Motherwell. So we were literally doing three jobs. And then, but Be Inspired was a hobby. Be yep. Inspired was almost like Monday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, Sunday night. That was Be Inspired's time. Right, okay. So, and it, it just quickly. So you say, when you say time, what were you doing in those, in, in those wee pockets of time? Was that packing orders? Building like, websites. Aye, building websites. Yeah. In shambles. Yeah, that was a shambles. That was so hard. So yeah. you yeah. Spilled yeah. in the yeah. website yeah. yeah. so The first two, really. Yeah, Big Cartel was Cartel. the first the first website, and then we built a Shopify store. Shopify. Right. The very, in Shopify, this was the early days. Imagine investing in Shopify at that time. You just still Shopify now, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But some like, of the biggest, some of the biggest retail brands. Aye. It's a lot, but it's, it's a got lot more user friendly now. I think you can just sort of have a theme. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't think it's super easy, but it's like got themes and it's got like sort of layouts already. But I didn't really have that. Okay. So back then it was Shopify site, your iPhone, mm -hmm. six hundred quid a year. Yeah, once we once we <laughs> once we once we raised enough money, we we bought our first MacBook. What were you doing before? Just just phone. Yeah, just phone. Just just the phone. Just but how are you? How are you then? No, you know what, and then know what we done? We had, when I was working in sport careers, stuff. sport. Yeah, we had a. I'm sure maybe we had a laptop. Yeah. Sports careers. When I was working, there was a graphic designer there, right? And we were paying him fifty quid. <laughs> Not a lot. Not very much. <laughs> no, you were a bit of a number was, there and then you no, stopped. It was, it was, it was like 50, quid, 50 quid every couple of weeks or something to come and help us out. But he buzzed off it. He loved it because no. he was like, we'd yeah. coming into his. I'd make he his, still works there now. He still gets paid the no, same. No, he does. <laughs> definitely does now. <laughs> But, I don't know where he is though. <laughs> this is the mad thing is he actually went away and started his own brand. Yeah. Did he? Started his own clothing yeah. line, yeah. Never right. seen him Do since, we, mine. Oh, <laughs> Do we know it? No, no. It was like he started like like something called Arco, Arco Bleno. Arco Bleno, he started. Like, guy, but he'd made like five t-shirts and then stopped. Wow. Yeah, that was a word. So Gary was... He's he's, he's, more, he's like, I could do that. I, I yeah, for pretty me. much. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people see it like that think, it, that, well, you just make a couple of t-shirts, it's easy. But they didn't see what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. Well, so the first, time, first time I met you must have been 2015. When you, mm. Was that 2015 you would have been in the Abercrombie, Abercrombie business? Abercrombie yeah, business. Yeah. Yeah. So I walked into this wee business centre and there was like, Homemade racks, and then you guys were in an office on like a mez like level. A mezzanine, and you know. when I walked to it, I was like, t shirt business, I'm doing that. Like, I, everybody went, Oh, look, look what these guys are doing. Like, that's like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's cheeky, but like, that, that looks easy. I can, yeah. I can do that. And I think a lot of these bedroom brands did pop up mm -hmm. at that point. We'll yeah, sure. Before that, some of them are still around today, and some of them have just steadily declined since that kind of 2016 peak mm -hmm. of. Yeah. I think we were super protective of like knowledge or anything we did back in the day because we're like anyone can start about like I don't think anyone can start. I think you can start it and you can do well with it, but like not anyone can. You can't just I think people go in there and be like, I can make money off this. Mm. It doesn't really work like that. You've got to kind of love what you do, and then the money will sort of come once you've put enough graft in to get some. Mm. It leads me on quite nicely. So when you then started to grow. So I had a story about the first Black Friday. So this is by this point, your Mrs. Amy is in the business. Cairo, who's still in the business now, is in the business. And this I heard this on, on your podcast. That you are running up and down the aisles, Amy's shouting out the orders and you well, a three a three week backlog from the first This was a, I reckon this was the second Black Friday. The first one the first, the first one, one was just me and you yeah. down at we we done it. Yeah, we'd we'd done it we, uh, the first one the first one we'd done at Mark's house and we had a an old Franken machine right. to to print the the addresses and it was a case of copy and paste from the new Mac. Black Friday wasn't even a thing. It wasn't Friday, really was a big it? thing, but we still seen a wee a wee pick up right. in sales. But the second the second year it was just me and Mark Oh, and I mind us waking up in the morning and I was like, mate, what about all these orders for this? So this is a, I stood in, in the gobbles and it was amazing in flat, which before was like my, it was a stock room, wasn't it? Yeah. That's where all, all yeah. the, the stock was held. So then we'd moved to Abercrombie Street at this point. Mm -hmm. So it was the second year and he'd had his operation on his hip. So he's up printing labels and like, he's going to move. And we got a delivery, it was 10 box delivery came in. DHL and the lift was knackered. 
So let her lay. I'm carrying these he's boxes. Ah, oh, he's knackered. I'm no, carrying the boxes that, up the stairs. I was on crutches for six. Yeah. Just like Here's me thinking about that six hundred quid when we start. I'm not getting any extra. <laughs> it sounds like you've always yeah. got a better than <laughs> deal. He's not telling you he's in my flat free for him. <laughs> <laughs> you still do rent money off your day. Your dog pissed on him. <laughs> that's just because he liked him. That's it. Uh, that's all. Yeah, so, me, me and Billy had to be a love hate relationship, didn't they? Right. <laughs> These were quite clever with your football network. So you started giving guys and selling T-shirts to guys, but also handing out T-shirts to the guys who you thought were going places. Mm. And they did. So then when they then moved to different clubs, the clothes then spread throughout different clubs. So you, do you want to talk about the, the impact that football, that your network within football has had on the growth of the business? Because think, because we're talking like I think I think it's given I think it's had an impact on everything yeah. the fits of what we did the styles of what we did the growth of the business like is that the feedback the credit, that the you then got from the, the business food, from the probably. players or just driven by the styles of like watching what people are doing or is it direct feedback from guys that you then I think food? I think we've seen in the dressing room what boys were wanting to wear or wearing or like if what there was always one guy would come in and the boys would slag him like the dressing room is a tough place like it's savage yeah. <laughs> So, are we talking about his clothes here? It's probably fucking <laughs> me as well. I, <laughs> yeah, he was in the clothes business, but I used to wear like loud stuff here, eh? <laughs> like, bright red jackets and shit. Um, but yeah, like I think it, yeah, I think the the feedback we got probably like like you, like you say you saw at that point when you were playing football, everything was massive. Like you were wondering mm-hmm. about me, like me and Rob weren't like big guys anyway, but you were getting like extra large strips, and it was sort of changing that boys wanted to like. Like you put a lot of effort into football, like everyone's in good shape. So they were like buying like one boy I knew at Ross County was buying like a small strip. Like you get given a strip, but he actually went to the club shop and bought a small so he could wear it in the game because it looked mm-hmm. better on him. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it, that's just kind of what like boys were doing at that point. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I know that's quite vain to be fair. A boy I used to play with. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> never played with me here. Yeah, I, I took his place, man. He used to play the game. Uh, extra small to be fair. Yeah, I was a bit smaller than <laughs> <laughs> don't need a symphony don't <laughs> you? <laughs> you but it, you? you've also yeah. said that it's had a big impact on the way you run your business so the way you two speak to each other mm-hmm. and like it's you, the you're transferable not... skills from football are unreal like fix, like how like I'd say like we're pretty thick skinned mm-hmm. um we, yeah, because you, you got booed every week. Yeah, yeah, there is that. There is that. Yeah, if you start booing me, it's fine. I'll handle that. If you don't handle fine, that. Fine. Yeah, but yeah, just like being able to handle pressure situations. Uh, if you go to like play Rangers or Celtic, for example, like you can beat three 0 after ten minutes, and you're like, shit, long day. It's yeah. going to be a long day. But you, but again, you, you've got to, again, you've got to handle it. And I think these sort of skills definitely, like, say for example, just now, like. August, July, August, quite a, quite a time for any fashion business. Yeah. It's, it's quiet just we're, now. We're, we're summer yeah. stuff. Yeah, we're we're waiting on the autumn winter stuff coming, yeah. like the jackets and like people. It's still warm enough outside. People don't really need the jackets. Like jackets are sitting in the warehouse. Well, we've got to sell these now. Mm-hmm. Like they're getting at least at the end of the month. I think one of the men- these, these mentality, little things. One of the things that David Martindale said that I never really thought about, but it's like something you probably have to deal with at the level that me and Robbo played. That it's like. He he's actually got people coming in and see a psychologist, and it's like um, this is we're, this is the Livingston, Livingston manager. manager yep. We've done the podcast, podcast recently, and he said like like we only win thirty three percent of our games. Do you know what I mean? So we get beat the rest of the time. And right. he said it's how do we how do my players deal with getting beat all the time? Because like we could go six games out winning a game, but if you look at the season of whole, if we won thirty three percent of our games, that's a successful season. We've stayed in the league. Yep. We might actually even finish mid table at that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So like. That's something, again, it's a trivial thing for football, but it's quite a difficult thing to overcome when you're getting beat every week to still have that mentality to go again. And 100%. it's like, it, it is like, it's probably tough mentally. And like you say, you get, you're getting abused, you're getting a manager shouting at you, but there's, there's great good times as well. Do you know what I mean? But it's impact quite that then has on business. Like I've and, uh, spent the, my the, career in sales teams. And mm-hmm. if we had a salesperson that sold 33% of the things they tried to sell, they'd be worth a fortune. So mm-hmm, exactly. like, yeah. you need to be able to have yeah, that yeah. kind of t- like tenacity to then go again, go yeah. again, go yeah. again. And I think business, biz, like, business replicates that. Like if, like you say, in sales or if you're in fashion or whatever you're doing, like 
it just it's seasonal do you know what i mean so, so that's like winning and losing winning yep. and losing and it's it kind of is very you similar keep, to football still going yeah. in the low time so I mean. when i announced that you guys were filming on the podcast one of the first comments on it was a guy johnny rose and he wrote mm. hey, i love their uh their motto of never get too high never get mm. too low so is that is that a football thing is that a business thing What's that's just a football thing isn't it he's got the story yeah he's got the story uh, when i'd first signed for um hamilton it was in the second division i'd gone from junior football and was quite successful at junior football. Went to Hamilton. I wasn't he playing. And I remember one time I was coming, like, I got brought on, and one of the fans shout, stood up and shouted, "What the fuck are you bringing him on for? He's shite." <laughs> uh, so it was a bit of a bad time. And then we went and played this. <laughs> <laughs> we, we went. I have an understatement now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, went, we went and played a, a, a cup game against St Johnson, and I came off the bench and I, I beat like three or four players, and I scored right. So I'd run off to the fans celebrating like you do, but high as a kite. And then like the ninetieth minute, the balls dropped to the edge of the box, and I've tried to beat a couple of boys. It's got taken off me, put out wide, crossed in goal, got beat two one. So I've gone to change room, fucking devastated. Eh? Like I played really, really well, but devastated. And the chairman came up to me, he was like, "Do you know why that happened?" I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "You got, you got too carried away. You were too like emotionally involved. You got too excited." He's like, "See, what, like, can you get too high when things are going well, and don't ever get too low when things are going badly?" So you just brush yourself off and go again next week. So since then, I always took that on board because it was a bit of a harsh lesson. It reminds me every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also told us a story about jackets that you ordered mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is obviously a lot further further down the line yeah, like you spent how much on jackets yeah so 40 grand or something I, well that was on one order so that was we'd been away to china to the canton fair uh, it's like the first time we've been there searching for new factories kind of all excited good, look, look, got too high got looking too for high. better yeah <laughs> looking for looking for better quality and i think that was key to us is the quality of the products that we were making so constantly like how do we keep improving non-stop if yep. you look at the products now compare what i was making at that first factory in, in thailand it's night apart and day from my, apart from my, my fade my rosie's fade no i think that was that that was turkey that was that right? yeah, okay. i was thinking that was turkey that one so that was a we went to we went to china we were looking for a jackets factory right. so we we'd already been put on uh, we were making with uh an agent in the uk who he passed so like go and meet meet the guys whatever mm -hmm. so then we were obviously getting ahead of ourselves looking at like other factories as well i wonder if we get better prices for they're giving us this price i wonder if we could speak to them and get better prices so we got chatting to these guys and uh eventually placed an order we sampled with them no problem with four styles thousand jackets each style four thousand jackets oh, so samples came in man it was like amazing on clear or something this is <laughs> awesome. this is amazing so with jackets, you need to. So we're we're developing our jackets in the next month or two for next autumn winter. Like you need your samples in before Chinese you have to, year happens. You have to have your samples in for January for the delivery becoming like end of July, end of August, end of October. What you've just said, though, end of September. That, how long does it take you to pick up things like that? Like, have you ever been caught out with that? Sorry, we'll cut, yeah. come back to this. Got on with the with the, with the jackets first. And right, for that. right. Okay. Yeah. So. Jackets arrived. Well, we always get there's a there's a process. We get the PP sample, pre-production sample. Then we'll we'll get a shipment sample to mm -hmm. confirm that yeah, the bulk's good. They can they can go on the truck or the mm -hmm. the boat or the the airplane, whatever. And then they arrive. And then QC the the guys in the warehouse will give them to the the garment techs. Can you check these out? So check them out. I was like. Phones us, Mark Stephen. There's a problem. Were they not on the boat at this point, though? No, I think they were. No, because they we got them at the warehouse. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I mean. So they've been in the warehouse. Oh, so that was when they were in the warehouse. Out. The bulk had arrived, and then the guys have taken them out. So who went? You're going to try that on. So they put them on, and Mark's put one arm in, another arm in. Just like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, I think there's something wrong with the jackets. <laughs> yeah. So literally, but. They sold the arms on the wrong way. The wrong way round. The, the full production, all the production. And but there was just like, so many mistakes. Forty grand that you'd paid up front. You, you paid, paid forty paid, grand. Paid up front. Paid up front for the for, for the jackets. You needed it before. Now, now we get terms from the factories. Like they'll they'll give us like 30, 60 day terms. Mm -hmm. So when we are, are like, they arrive, we start selling them. 
then we can you have to pay then for we the can pay for them. up front. Do you know what I mean? You have to pay for them to go and buy the fabric. But you're using a factory for the first time, yeah. like they want payment up front before they even ship them because they could they're thinking that we're gonna do them out of money. Nah. They've actually done us out of money. So you said that at that point your attitude was just right. How do how do we deal with us? They're in the bin, what we're selling that. Aye. That's what that's only what that's what you can do. But then then you can go home and cry about it, but or you can just deal with it. So that's again never get too high, never get too low. Exactly that. Oh, it's you like did get too high, by it was like, but you never got too low. But when the late, the relating back to the football thing, it was like having a bad game on a Saturday. Aye. Going home, I was murdered the other day, but then going right Monday, I've got a chance to make. And make then you know, what else are you going to do? You're not going to just like <laughs> done. Upper, are you? Do you know what I mean? There's nothing you can really do. I remember hearing someone say, "You can, you've already, you've already lost. You didn't want to lose. You could, you could lose mm. twice by yeah, beating sure. yourself up and getting yeah. yourself locked up. You uh, lose once, that's it. Yeah, definitely. Um, but you, you mentioned they're like Chinese New Year. So see things like like that. How long do you reckon that that takes to get that level of knowledge that you can then protect yourself against? Every time you get caught out with it, do you know what I mean? Like, Aye. like you learn, obviously, like me and him are thinking, right, this is coming in like June or that. And then like to the girls, when's it coming? Like, well, there's like Chinese New Year or there's Eid or there's something. And you're like, fuck, I forgot about that. Do you know what I mean? And you get caught <laughs> yeah. with Eid every year. Yeah, every year, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it's like, tough to supply like, what's, what's the, what did they go through with it? You don't eat during, they don't eat during Ramadan, the Ramadan. hours. Ramadan. Ramadan. So they have like Ramadan. And then at the end of Ramadan, they have like a, a week where they just go mental. Like they just we've been across it drink and eat and just like just, just take the week off and just don't do anything for a week and then they it turns into two weeks and then <laughs> do you know what I mean? so, so delays delays yeah, and, it's, and it's it, when is it is it not like it's, august sometime i was i'm sure it's like maybe oh, end of june oh, end of start of july somewhere like that. Oh, fuck, see, still, nah, yeah. there you go yeah it's, 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 it's on the calendar it'll be on yeah. it'll be on stephen yeah. stephen jillian's yeah, calendar in the office see, we don't we don't deal with that anymore yeah we've got like like a garment department that deals with that now so they have to factor that in otherwise me and when you say a good department we've literally got three like three the three girls are in there Lisa, Steph and Gillian Steph's on maternity leave just now she's the head of the department Yep. so she's back in a couple of weeks and then Gillian's the, our head designer she's going off on maternity leave so it's just like a revolving door just now but so. you said that, that so, so the um, the staff are all starting to get older as Aye. are your like original customers, customers. Mm-hmm. and everybody's life's changing I think, I think the staff we have at the moment are probably pretty similar to me and Matt Leo. like the loyalty thing is like Hey, I know you were in on Monday. Daryl, who's been on customer service for six years, mm-hmm. like she's like, and she's Cairo's sister. So yep. Cairo's been with us for eight, nine years. So mm-hmm. she's went from packing orders to customer service to doing wholesale with ASOS to now being social media manager. So mm-hmm. it's like that. I think they're all got the same mentality yeah, like, as us. Right, it feels like their business as well. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's kind of what we say to them all the time. Is like, no, it's our business but it is your business as well because you've helped us get to where it is the now do you know what I mean? and cal is the warehouse manager Callum's a wa- warehouse operations manager so me and Callum are at school together um, and he's been there for eight yeah, nine years as well yeah so Callum me and him are at school together we were youth trainees at dundee together we played in the first team at dundee together um he'd done his f- football journey as well um had a, again a couple of bad injuries to then working offshore to hate and that's saying, mate, I, can I please give me a job? I'll do anything. He used to come out, he used to be offshore, so he'd be on, on and off, so he'd be on for two weeks, off for two weeks, and then he'd just come in the warehouse and work with us for two weeks and then be like, please. So sometimes he wouldn't be off, he wouldn't go offshore for nah. like three or three months and then when it came to the oil industry had slowed down at the off. time, so he was just waiting on that dreaded phone oh, call. You could see space when he got it, man. He was just well, because he was having to go offshore and go offshore. Like, he used to love coming <laughs> Again, in and interacting with the boys. He was, he was very much. He loved football more than me and Mark. Me and Mark seen football was great. It was amazing. Seen it more as a job where he loved football and he still mm-hmm. does now. So he's like one of the under sixteens coach at Livingston yeah. as well. And he, he does that all for free, he's voluntary work. Right. So he does his work with be inspired, then he goes away and does that at night. And he's, so he now runs your warehouse, but yeah. like you said, it's that culture that you've then built that everybody's there, they're they're having, they get the work done. Mm-hmm. But they're having a laugh as they're doing it. So that was the vibe that Jamie and I got in when we were yeah. on Monday. Yeah, sure. Um, you also you also then do these amazing photo shoots and pool parties and all these different events. So the 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 other side of the kind of the business side, but you've got all these other perks. Mm-hmm. Do you guys go? Is it every year you go and do a photo shoot somewhere? Yeah, we try and do, do, do it two or three times a year. We, used, we probably used to do more, but you 
Why do like two or three really main ones? And you've done like four or five. Thailand, yeah, uh, Easter, Miami, New York. It was you... almost the thing like leading on from the very first photo shoot we done in in Thailand mm -hmm. that it was almost like setting a stand like how do we differentiate from the other brands of what they're doing, and then we were I think one of the we went to Barcelona the first one we were in yeah, we we used Bradley Coin and, and then and then it just we, it's kind of like just doing stuff that works for you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So like we. We obviously started in Thailand, and then that worked for us. And then we went to Barcelona, and then we got some really cool images that people that were starting. Brands it was standing out on the social, on like so. It was the early days of like Instagram and stuff like that. So it was really standing out to people. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I think we just carried that on, and it just had a snowball effect. I don't think any other people, brand did, did it. And then obviously buyers, like buyers at Foot Asylum and agents it. and stuff like that start taking notice. Yep. So it was definitely well let's not stop this it's yeah. working for us so the only thing that became difficult was like how do you upstage each photo shoot mm -hmm. that was get them better every yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. On a tokyo yeah. one year which was it's mad. mental but and so the most recent one was that the big villa in spain the yeah, villa, yeah. Villa in yeah. Spain or something? we just hired a, a villa in marbella just sometimes it's tough to go out on the streets and do the photo shoots, but I think we went to the Dubai. We started getting dragon yeah. suitcases. You get moved on. You've not got a license. You can't do a photo shoot there. Nah, and then, yeah, of course, yeah. so we just hired the, the one location so that we could I do it there. It was brilliant. It was really good. To start. Uh, we're going to get on to TikTok mm -hmm. very shortly and talk about your your street styling. Um, let's just get right on it. So that's a that's been a big thing that you've done over the last is it year year last a bit. year year and a bit and you're the face of it. Housewife's um, favourite. <laughs> Should we start rumours? <laughs> You're not with it. <laughs> but you, you and Cairo go out yeah. a lot of the time in your face. He comes out too, he just doesn't go on the camera. Oh, are you there as well? Yeah, he acts all shy in that, isn't it? Just come for the band. Do you just watch it? Mm -hmm. No, you Again. do it. No, you do the interviewing somebody and then he comes up to you after you should have said this and you should have said that and I was like mate yeah, there's got to be the there's direct the, there's, the mic, there's the microphone you do it so get the microphone out of his hands <laughs> but you, you, you like to walk up to people mm -hmm. people you, think it's staged it's no staged at all you've had some belters that do yeah, look staged so, though like, I know it could potentially be staged or that there was, one, there was one in Glasgow it's the most views we've had on, on a tip it was like 2.2 million views right. and this kid from Glasgow was like I just went, it was about this time last year, I think, mm -hmm. we just about to launch our uh, Gilets. Mm -hmm. And that time was like, oh, how you doing, mate? He's like, I oh, fine. Do you want to try on some of our stuff? He's like, oh, I'll try on the giblet. No, no, he's, he's like, do you like, he just, do you like he just went, no, do you like my giblet? And we're like, oh, what? What the fuck's a giblet? <laughs> and he's like, like chicken. Like, uh, it's like, <laughs> oh, a gilet. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. no, your giblet's nice, mate. So honestly, people were quite, the comments just went mental. Oh, he's an idiot. He's a rocket. Who's this guy? Yeah. <laughs> he's actually so, really sound bad. He's a really, really good lad. We were actually doing a, like, a, a little content shoot at Glasgow College a few months later. And this Audi's driven past, and this guy's hanging at the window. All right, it's me, the giblet guy. Right. <laughs> What's going on? People are mad. Now, People are mad. That you've taken all over the place. So you've done that yep. in New York. So that was like, we've done a photo shoot campaign in New York uh, last October. Um, so we've always done, like, well, if we're doing a photo shoot, we always have an extra day there. Well, we'll just use the, the samples from the photo shoot. Well, they're, they're normally messy, dirty anyway. Right. So then it saves using more stock. Then we'll just like and it saves us taking away. them home as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is yeah. that what your your box that you used to take to the football was like? Just the, mm -hmm. the returns much. that you can yeah, make bothered folding. Be bothered folding them. Yeah. Just take the shiter box to football and sell. Yeah. <laughs> shiter box. Yeah. When I played, didn't tell them it was a Yeah. When I played them in throws, the boys used to call it the whoopsie box. No, they're uh, like yellow <laughs> stickers. Uh, you and Asda. <laughs> the, they used to call it the whoopsie box. So well, we were in on Monday, and the guy came with for the um, returns, which obviously all retail, online retail businesses are going to get. So the guy comes in on, on Monday and he puts in a couple of bags, comes back, puts in it, and he kept, he kept bringing them in and I went, is that your returns? And you went, aye. But nah, <laughs> like, The thing is, right, returns are going up because you're making, you've got, you're, before it was difficult for a customer to return someone where it's like, it's so, so easy, easy now. It's like, like you've got, the way they were marketing as well, see with the TikTok and stuff like that, the new customer the new customer acquisitions like mad now and people are buying cargos people are trying the brand out i know it seems weird that it's still new customers after so long but i think with tiktok we've brought in a whole new audience mm, yep. of younger people yeah. and they're trying this stuff out so they may be buying like a small medium large or do you know what i mean they're buying multiple sizes so 
I had to try them all. Yeah, we're getting on like 400 quid. You're like, oh, that's brilliant. But 200 comes back. Do you know what I mean? Mm Because it's like small, medium, Mm -hmm. small, medium, and everything. So just the way. I suppose if you if you were liking it to pre online, that was people taking different sizes to a fitting room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now it's just they're buying them and then we probably over time is like instead of just being that one fit. We like we've introduced like short leg, yeah. long leg, regular leg, relaxed fit, slim fit tees, oversized hoodie. Do you know it's like yeah, yeah. so there's a not that customer who's been there like for maybe five, ten years, then like so maybe he's confused a little bit with what yeah. size, so we're trying to streamline that even further like you, a bit. It's like trends change as well. To bring in new customers, you have to change your size size and so everything like when we started was like super slim fit and like those skinny jeans that everyone wore that mm-hmm. are horrendous now, but like everyone wore I used to wear them all the time. Spray on them yeah, yeah. Yes, spray like, on the So like to bring new customers and you kinda keep selling that, you need to be on trend. So you've kind of got looser stuff, but then the people that used to buy it still like the skinny thing. So then it's like then you're caught in that position of like, well, you've kind of made your size chart a little bit bigger. So the returning customer is like, well, I bought that, but doesn't he fit like the skinny thing I used to like? Do yep. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it all changes. They'll end up liking things a little bit looser, but just it just increases the returns. One of the best things that when Jamie and I popped out on Monday, normally we pop out and plan the podcast and we just sat and had a blather, but mm-hmm. you showed me something on your phone and a notification popped in, Shopify notification. Shopify notification, and, I, and then you just kept cancelling off, and I went, "Have you still got your Shopify notifications on?" You were like, "Absolutely, never mm-hmm. turn them off." No, nah, never. The thing that keeps us going, isn't it? Uh, I, I couldn't believe that after seventy-five my, million pound worth of sales, you still. Like, I turn my WhatsApp off when it starts doing my head. Right? You're like, my, uh, "WhatsApp notifications." My, yeah, notifications for him have turned off. That's <laughs> him off right? well, no, like, <laughs> my, my mate's my mate's got a barber shop, and he says he used to have like when when someone booked an appointment, it goes ching on his mm-hmm. phone. And he's like, oh, I turned it off when it started. Like, and I was just like, I couldn't believe that you just like my, that on. It, that. For me, it's like scoring a goal. That's what it feels right, like. Okay. It's like that football thing. Okay, a buzz off it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to someone if they were starting a clothing brand today? So obviously, it's going to be so different to what you've done nine years ago. Mm-hmm. But if you had to... And I still think the organic thing's massive. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to, like... Like people will look at like what we're doing, like with the, I'm sure everybody probably in here has been hit with paid ads, like from being inspired at some point. Um, especially now that you can't you can't target audiences like you like you previously yep. did, mm-hmm. and it has made like sales tougher to come by. So, so especially like, quiet, yeah, yeah you, can tar- you can target people, but you can't hit them with like specific products. Mm-hmm. Say you went on a website and um. Like, you know how it comes up saying accept cookies or not? Yeah. And usually people say no because they think that means they're not going to get adverts. But it doesn't mean that. It means you're still going to get adverts. You're just not going to be going to get you. fucking adverts that you don't really want. You don't really because want. if you accept it, you're going to get adverts tailored to if you. If you're constantly going on fashion websites and you accept if you, you accept them, then you're, you're more than likely just going to get hit with fashion stuff ads. Stuff you like. Stuff, stuff you like. like. You just stuff you're interested in. I'm a big advocate for this. Uh, like, if, you say, yeah. if you say no, you're getting hit with sofas, TVs, a lot. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Just, or even like, so say you really like polos and you go on the website and you like polos if you've not accepted that you could get hit with like jeans or like yep. shoes but you really want a polo do you know what i mean whereas like previously before you had to accept that if you went on the website and looked at a polo we'd hit you with polo ads yeah, yeah. Oh, you bought so, yeah, we it, follow you with the specific yeah, product like, you know, we the, we the, the, the website yeah. that you bought or, yeah. or the internet basically whereas now it's just like random stuff you'll get hit with from the website do you know what I mean? so it's it's still advertising, but it's just not like as tailored. I used to work with a woman who thought that she was like dark online, and I was just like, "There is no such thing as somebody nowadays that's yeah. that's dark online." Your phone could tell you exactly mm-hmm. where you've been. Like sure. yeah, all this information is there to be had, mm-hmm. yeah. but uh, it's like you say, it's the more open you are to allowing it, the more tailored it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Better quality your advertising is going don't to be. Make, don't get it wrong; it makes it better for us. But it's like hundred like percent. Like I was saying about the like the organic stuff, like people getting hit with paid ads. We only do paid ads when we know that something's working organically. Mm-hmm. Like very rarely will we just put out a new product there, like unless we're really confident it's going to work. But like we're not going to put paid ad money behind something we don't know that works organically. Regarding so, starting a new brand as well, I think you just you probably just have to start. Like mm-hmm. we were saying when you came into the office, like. We got away with murder when we first started, like badges upside down, badges that didn't look like the badges they were supposed to. The one that was that was supposed to be like one color, and it came in. It was like it was supposed to be like uh, beige, and it came in. It was green. And you were like, just put it offline. Was, it's it just was so like, uh, green. It's yeah, like it was a terrible like, color. But yeah, and just like just stuff have, like that. But like nowadays, I think there's like there's, there's a made it, made it so much easier for people to get 
sort of factories, there's like people out there factories like Alibaba, things like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Which there's it guys on, easier, there's guys on TikTok difficult. supplying yeah, factories yeah. to people. Oh, this is the factory for off white and represent and so and so. It's like right. so these guys are on TikTok saying like, Oh, here's the factory details, contact yeah. this guy, he'll help you out. So minimums will do a hundred pieces. So there's there's more info there for mm -hmm. people to start a I brand thing. I would say is like start. try and like if you are gonna start it'd probably be a case of like try and do something a little bit different. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Try and be um, try and be unique. What what's your unique thing that you've got to bring to the to the table? And, and be inspired was probably our loud designs and the fit of the stuff we yep. did originally. Whereas, like a lot of people are just sort of seeing a brand out there and trying to copy yep. it. Like and that and that works. Do you know what I mean? But like if you can come out with something unique, I think it works even better. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, guys. Thank you very much. I'm going to pass over to Rabbi with Q and A. Um, that was brilliant. Really, really insightful. Um, 